This is the first video in a series of new videos about the Albedo Telecom X Genius. The objective of this video is to provide an overview of the operation and graphical user interface and will be hopefully useful to those who have never used the product previously. When you first power up the X Genius, you come to the home screen. The home screen is divided into two main sections. On the right hand side, we have the setup and test controls. This is where you can configure the physical interfaces on the unit and the tests that you want to run. And on the left hand side, we have the auxiliary displays where there are three tabs, the shortcuts and menu tab, the summary tab and the LEDs tab. And we'll come back to these later in the video. Now the top right hand side we have the five main menu buttons. The config button takes you into the config menus and this is where you select which physical interface you want to run on or run a test on. You can select the physical parameters for that test. You can also select the input and output clocks. The test button takes you into the test menus and this is where you set up the test that you want to run on the physical interface that you've set up in the config menus. The results button takes you into the results menus where you can see the results for the test that you're currently running. Above these three buttons we have the system button which takes you into the system menus. In the system menus you can see information such as the software version you're currently running on, what licenses you've got installed on the unit for different options, and other system parameters that you can set up. The file manager button takes you into the file menus. Here you can access the test result files that have been saved. Also configuration files. Configuration files are test setups that you've stored and given a name and can recall later on for uh, other use. Below the config menus or the button, the five main menu buttons, we have a predefined test area. The predefined test area are basically special shortcuts for tests that have been pre-configured into the unit. If you scroll up and down in this area, you'll see there are a number of predefined tests for different technologies, different interfaces. To run these tests, just click on any of them. That will load up the configuration. You can then run the test as standard or using the test and config menu buttons, you can go in and change the parameters for a particular test that you may want to run. The five main menu buttons are hierarchical menus. So if we go into any of these menus, for example, the config menu, you'll then see the hierarchical menu being displayed. When there are further menus to be accessed, you'll see a black arrow on the right hand side of the display. So for example, if we click on port A, we're then taking into another menu and you can see there are sub menus. So every one we down, we'll click down, we go another layer. Now to go back up, there's a return white arrow in the bottom right hand corner that will take us back up a layer until we reach the top of the menu when the white arrow would disappear. Now to get back to the home screen, we can click the square white icon in the top right hand corner and this brings us back up to the home screen. Now on the left hand side of the screen, we have the three tabs. The first tab is the shortcuts and menus tab. The shortcuts tab is really a re what we may call a recently used panel. So it shows you each screen that's been visited recently by the user and they're listed in order up to a maximum of five. So for example, if we go into the results screen now and into port B, you'll see that's added to the list and the oldest will just drop off the bottom. But this gives us a quick way of moving between the last menus that we've used. So for example, uh, we could go back to the frame layer config menu or one of the other config menus, or we could go into port B into the results files. If we want to keep any of these on the screen, we can click on the left hand side. So I want to keep this frame layer a menu selection there. I can click on the left hand side, put a padlock on it. This will then not disappear off the screen. It may scroll down, but it will stay on the display so you don't lose that. 
Now, as I said, we got the five main menus, but the three main menu operational menus are the test menu, the config menu, the results menu. If I click on the test menu, for example, you'll see I can go through the menu structure on the right hand side here. But on the left hand side, I can get an overview of that hierarchical menu. So I can use this right hand menu to go up and down, move up and down. Or I can simply click on the left hand side here and jump to the appropriate menu that I want to, the higher level menu that I want to. Now I click on the summary screen. The summary screen provides me a summary of the current setup of the unit. And this can be very useful once you've configured the unit to see how it's configured. At the moment, you can see I'm looking at port A. If I'm running a test or using a physical interface that has two ports, I can flick between the two ports to see how they're both set up. This gives me a summary, in which this case I can see that it's set up for Ethernet, because I'm looking at 1000 base T on the physical port. I can see the destination and source MAC address. There's no IP layer set up. And I can see that I've got one stream set up to send continuous traffic at 13%. Then the last uh, tab is the LEDs tab. These are basically soft LEDs showing me the physical status of the interface stroke test that I'm currently running. Obviously, green indicates a, a, a good scenario or a good situation where the interface is working properly. A red shows you an alarm state. Now these can change depending on the physical interface that I've selected and what type of test I'm running. Now these are real time, so sometimes you may want to understand what's happened previously, have they changed state. You can do that by looking at the history button. The history button shows you the previous state or if, if, it, if an event has changed and it was, you know, for example, gone green to red, then back to green. And I can reset these if I want to go back, uh, get rid of any history. So I'm going to take off the history, and that gives me back to the live position. Now, at the bottom of the screen, I get the test, run, and st uh, start and stop button, as well as the event button. At the moment, you can see the test is running. But if I press the stop button, stop that test, you can see now the status has changed here. It says stopped. It also says stop down here. If I run it again. You can now see the test is running, and you can see the elapsed time. There's also an event button here. So if I set up uh, in the, set, the test setup to, for example, insert an event into a data stream, if I click on the event button here, it will in, insert that event into the data stream. Now, the start, stop, the control buttons, the event buttons are always displayed if I'm in the test, config, or results menus. So I can switch between any of these. And this is always displayed. But if I go into the home menu, it disappears. So if I need to control a test, start, stop a test, or do it, or insert an event, I need to make sure I'm in the test, um, the config, or the results menu. 